Palace's cats may look like cute and lazy house cats, but don't let that fool you. They've made home to one of the most difficult places to live in the world, the Himalayas. Hi, I'm Danielle and you're watching Animal Logic. Palace's cats, or Manul, are a species of small cat found in the Eurasian steppes, living everywhere from the Mongolian deserts to the Himalayas. They are the only living members of the Autocolobus genus, and their closest living relatives are leopard cats, with their last common ancestor living just under 6 million years ago. A common question asked about Palace's cats is, can I own one? The answer is, as always, no. And while Palace's cats may resemble domestic cats, their last common ancestor lived 6.2 million years ago. They get their name from the German naturalist who first formally described them, Peter Simon Pallas, though their scientific name, Autocolobus manul, has a much more interesting meaning. Autocolobus means ugly-eared, an assessment that I can't say I entirely agree with. Their so-called ugly ears do serve a purpose, though. Hiding. Unlike most other cats, which have big, pointed ears, Pallas's cat's ears are short and round. This comes in handy when you spend most of your day hiding from both predators and prey, as pointy ears would be all too conspicuous. Living in the steppes, their coats are also designed to blend in. In the winter, their fur is more grey, and in the summer, it becomes more of an orange-brown. Can you find the Pallas's cat? Oh, it's right there. Palace's cats have been called the most expressive cats in the world. And while part of that reputation may come from their snaggly teeth, the main reason for their seemingly expressive faces is another feature that is different from other small cats, their pupils. If you look closely, you'll notice that unlike other species of small cat, Palace's cats don't have vertical slits for pupils, and instead have round ones, just like us. This gives them somewhat of a more human look, and is probably why people on the internet call them their spirit animal. I guess they kinda, sometimes, do look like they also don't like Mondays. If anything, this makes them the Garfield of wild cats. But Palace's cats don't have round pupils so that reputable news sites can put together listicles about the 14 times Palace's cats threw more shade than Beyonce. They have them for hunting. Generally speaking, most cats with vertical pupils are ambush hunters. With vertical pupils, cats can control the amount of light that enters their eye because they can expand their pupils 300 hundredfold, compared to round pupils which can only expand about 15-fold. Vertical pupils provide excellent vision along the y-axis and very good depth perception, two things key to ambush predators. They also tend to be found on smaller animals. Domestic cats have vertical pupils, but lions and tigers don't. This is due to how light enters the vertical pupil. When the vertical pupils are closer to the ground, there is less blur in their vision, and the sharper the predator's vision, the more likely they are to nab dinner. But here's where it gets weird. Cats with circular pupils are foragers, meaning they chase their prey. But Palace's cats are ambush hunters, yet don't have the vertical slit pupils found on their relatives. We're not entirely sure why Palace's cats have round pupils, but the leading theory is that since Palace's cats' territory is so much more varied than other small cats, ranging from deserts to plains to mountains, they need the better overall vision that round pupils provide for finding prey at different elevations and for keeping an eye on their predators, like eagles. Palace's cats are diurnal predators, meaning that they are active during the day. When hunting, they feed primarily on rodents, like gerbils and pikas, with the occasional small bird or young marmot thrown in the mix. Their prey of choice, though, is the pika. They're the largest animal they can consistently catch, and it's much more efficient to catch one large prey than a couple small ones. Palace's cats aren't fantastic runners, perhaps due to the difficult terrain they live in, and are much better at pouncing on prey as they exit their dens. Palace's cats may look like they're fat cats, but it's all fluff. Despite appearances, they are quite small, with the largest weighing around 4.5 kilos, about the weight of an average domestic cat. Their poofy fur coat is to keep them warm in the extreme temperatures that they live in, and their fur is actually the densest fur of any cat in the world. Due to the extreme temperatures that they live in, estrus, or the period in which the female is fertile, lasts a mind-numbing one to two days a year. Move over, pandas! We have a new worst at reproducing species entering the arena. 
Palace's cats live in very low densities, with only four to eight cats per hundred square kilometers. That would be like if you were here in Toronto, there would only be about 25 to 50 people in the entire city. <sighs> would be nice. Since their ranges are so huge, and since they are so solitary, it makes it incredibly difficult for them to find a mate in this limited time window. If they do, their gestation period is 10 to 11 weeks, after which mum will make a den, lining it with fur, feathers and leaves to protect the kitties from the extreme temperatures. The kittens weigh only 100 grams when born and are quite possibly the cutest things I've ever seen. Palace's cats are very difficult to find, let alone study in the wild. Their territory is huge, they're very good at hiding, and their numbers are small. Yet despite this, poachers still manage to catch them to sell their fur and guts for use in traditional medicine. Palace's cats are near threatened, and every year life gets a little harder as we develop into their habitat and drive out their prey. Something as docile as herding can be a big problem for Palace's cats, as herders need dogs, which kill a lot of Palace's cats and their prey. It's a hard problem that's difficult to solve, but the first step is getting the word out. What animal should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. Thanks for watching!